I've been lucid dreaming since I was a child and honestly, once you know how to rewire your brain to encourage this kind of experience, literally anybody can do this. So today, I am going to share all of my secrets with you. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm pretty excited because we're going to talk about lucid dreaming. So this is something I have been doing for a very long time. I kind of just did it by myself when I was a kid and I didn't realize what it was. And then as I learned about it, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And so I've continued my practice and my routine of um, just making sure I'm in the right headspace so that I can lucid dream. So welcome to this video. If you are new here, my name is Luna. I'm so thankful to share this space with you today. And let's just jump into it, okay? What is lucid dreaming? So I think that lucid dreaming and astral projection kind of get categorized together. So there's some confusion there, but lucid dreaming, I have written down an explanation so that I can give it to you concise. Um, my condensed definition of lucid dreaming is the act of becoming conscious that you are dreaming and often having the ability to act upon it by changing parts of the dream, like the environment, the characters, etc. So it's being in this dream space, realizing in the dream, oh, I'm dreaming right now. And then not always, it's not always, but sometimes if you get pretty good at it, you can change things. There's a lot of benefits to lucid dreaming besides it just being really a cool experience. Um, there have been studies done that show that you actually learn, some studies say that you learn even better in your sleep, um, like six times better, two times, I don't know, don't quote me because I don't remember, but I have read that. But either way, there are studies that show that doing things in your sleep, like skills, hobbies, um, I don't know, math, like things like that, doing these practices in your sleep actually help you to get better at those things. So it's like you were practicing them in real life. So it's kind of funny when people are like, oh, I can do that in my sleep. It's like, do it and you're gonna get better anyway. So this is something that I think is so cool. Um, but it's also been shown to actually help people with PTSD and anxiety because what it does is it kind of puts the power back into your hands when, you know, if you have struggled with PTSD and you have those recurring dreams, when those happen, if you are able to lose a dream in that moment and take your power back, change something that, that maybe happens, um, it's like, it's very empowering and it's, there's been a lot of studies that have shown that it have, it's um, been really helpful in people with um, a lot of mental health issues. Also, obviously, it connects you to your mindfulness, um, and it's just an amazing way to expand your consciousness and your brain. And it literally, I think it is activating some dormant parts of the brain and kind of increasing that brain activity. And for those of you who are maybe more interested in the spiritual side of lucid dreaming, um, I'm going to mention this book. I'll just throw it out here right now. This is called Dream Yoga and the Practice of Natural Light. Um, I highly recommend this. It's a hard read, though. I'm going to be real with you guys. If you don't have any knowledge of Tibetan philosophy, it will be a challenge um, because I didn't, and it was a challenge. Um, but they, they talk about having the ability to go and talk to these spiritual masters, people who have passed on. You can even contact, you know, your passed on loved ones, um, deities, things like that, and you can ask them questions and try to get some intuition and some divine insight from, from these communications with these people. And also, in lucid dreams, you can just have a good time. That's another benefit, right? It's just doing something, you know, going to the Eiffel Tower, like going somewhere crazy that you, that you wanna go. I'll share my experience, so, I, like I said, I have always been able to lucid dream and I didn't really think anything of it because I didn't have a name for it. I was just like, yeah, sometimes this really cool thing happens. And for me, it was a consistent experience of every time, not every time, but it would always start by me in my dream, going underwater, holding my breath, and then realizing that I can breathe. And I would just breathe and be like, shit. I can breathe underwater right now? This is sick. And then I'll realize, okay, well, I'm dreaming. Um, and I, 
my extent of my exploration was always just exploring the ocean and swimming underwater um, while breathing. And I think it's so funny because I've heard these crazy stories of people, you know, like trying to meet these people or trying to like go on a date with some celebrity, like crazy things. And I've always been like, nah, man, I just want to explore the ocean. <laughs> like very, very Pisces of me. Um, I think that's just so funny. So yeah, I've always kind of um, done that in the, and the underwater thing was always like my go-to. And then I started realizing, you know, if I was in a dream that was bad, like a nightmare or something, I could just get myself out of it. Um, but yeah, that's basically the extent of how it started for me. And that was just natural. Um, if you're familiar with astrology, I've got a lot of placements that put me in the astral realm. Like I've got a 12th house stellium, I'm a Pisces moon. My son is in the 12th house, so I've got a lot of planets that make it pretty easy for me to connect to the spiritual realm and to do dream work, so I think that's probably why it was so easy for me. Um, I never had to try, really, but as I did get older and, like, you know, you become an adult, life gets a little stressful, these stressors made it more difficult for me to lucid dream and it became less consistent. So that's when I started to incorporate these routines into my life to make sure that I'm harboring a peaceful nightly environment so that I can, um, you know, increase the chance of me lucid dreaming. And kind of on that, you know, the things that bring us out of our ability to lucid dream, that can be anything from extreme stressors, you know, when you're super tired, if you're super drained, or if you're distressed, if you go to bed thinking about all the things you need to do tomorrow, that is not gonna set you up for a positive dreaming experience. You're either gonna just knock out or you're just not gonna be connected enough to be able to lucid dream. And the biggest thing, you guys, for me, that gets me off of my lucid dreaming ability is when I forget to dream journal, okay? And I'm gonna talk about this more in the tips. This is the biggest thing. If, if it can literally be like, I will write my dreams down consistently for a month, and then like a day or two I miss it, I'm out. I'm out of it. I'm not gonna remember anything. So um, that is my biggest um, advice is to have a dream journal because there's so much. It's, it's so good, it's so good for you. Um, to start lucid dreaming or to get back on your lucid dreaming kind of like vibe, really just follow these routines, follow these tips, um, pick up your own if there's some stuff that you feel like helps you personally, um, and just follow it consistently for a couple of weeks to a month. It, it's really different for everybody, but if you have a lot of Pisces placements, a lot of 12th house placements, even 8th house placements maybe, um, you can connect to the dream space a little bit easier, um, but literally it depends on so much. So just give yourself a break and let yourself do these routines and it'll happen eventually for you because it really can happen for everyone. It's not like a special thing, like really, everybody can. So let me talk about my seven tips for lucid dreaming practice. Okay, so the first thing, and it's like really the first thing you want to do, is to create a peaceful sleeping environment. Um, a couple things that I make sure I do, and obviously I'm not 100% perfect at these things, but I definitely try to do this, is to have no phone or TV for at least two hours prior to bed, okay? And absolutely, this does not happen every night. You know, it's easy to get on your phone and to, and to get trapped into that loop. Um, but what I like to do is read for about an hour before bed, and that just gives me something to do. Um, you can also do yoga, do some meditation, things like that. Um, but really, that blue the blue light is really not great. It's really not great for your brain, and it wires you, and it keeps you away from entering that REM dream state where you can really lucid dream. With the peaceful sleep environment, like I said, you can do yoga, you can meditate, you can read. Um, I think having tea is really nice. You want to make sure that you do this like an hour or two before you go to bed or else you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night having to pee, okay? So take care of yourself, make sure, you know, don't drink it too close to bed. And I always like to make sure that I sort out everything for tomorrow in advance, because if I don't, I will worry. I think, okay, am I alarmed for that? Do I have, am I gonna remember this? Am I gonna do this? You don't wanna be worrying before you try to lose a dream. So make sure you have nothing to worry about. Um, also, if you can, make sure you have a peaceful awakening. 
Um, this is something that I think helps you for the next night. What I did is I have this alarm clock that I got last year. I'll link it below, it's on Amazon. And it's a sunrise alarm clock, so the, the light turns on and it kind of mimics the sunlight. And then you can set the alarm noise to be like this peaceful meditation music and it just gently wakes you up. Um, so I think that's been really helpful too. So yeah, step one, creating a peaceful sleep environment. My next tip, like I said, most important, getting a dream journal, okay? You don't have to buy anything fancy. You can literally just use any notebook that you have but just the act of writing down your dreams. You can even put it in your phone, in your notes app, whatever you need to do, writing them down is so beneficial. I keep mine by my bedside for easy access because honestly, like there have been times where I've woken up and it'll be like in the middle of the night, but I'll have this dream that was crazy and I want to just write it down. And so I've, you know, I got to like lean over and grab that. So having it easy to access is very important. Um, and basically what I do, I do this immediately after I wake up. Um, this just helps you to get everything down that you can. And sometimes you'll be awake for like three hours and then you'll remember your dream. That's fine. Just write it down whenever you remember it. But do upon waking, try to write it down and write down every detail you can think of. And you'll be surprised because a lot of the time you'll think, okay, all I can remember was that I was swimming. And then you'll write that down and you'll be like, oh yeah, 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 that person was there too, or this happened too. And it'll kind of just snowball. The more you recollect, the more comes out. Um, but sometimes, like I said, it comes in the middle of the day and you're like, well, okay, don't know how I forgot about that. But whenever you remember it, write it down. Otherwise, try to do it first thing in the morning. Um, so I try to write down all the details I can remember. I generally don't try to analyze it. Um, I don't know. I think a lot of people like it. If I see a recurring symbolism or pattern, then I'll note that and be like, okay, you know, every time I'm stressed about this, you know, this pops up or whatever. Um, so feel free to elaborate on what you think it might mean. But generally, I just like to write it down and just look at it neutrally and see, okay, interesting. Um, you can title it. I don't really like doing that. I don't feel like that helps me, but I've read a lot of people say that they like to title their dreams. I do like to make sure that I date it because it's really interesting to go back and to see. I was just looking through my dream journal today um, because I knew I was doing this video. And my first entry was like in September of 2020. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. So it's just cool. Um, and then you can look back and see like, okay, well, I graduated at this time or I got married at this time and this is what was in my dreams. Um, and you can really start to see those patterns, those symbolisms, everything like that. And with dating it, you can also see if you like kind of had a premonition about something. You can see if you saw something before it happened. A lot of times we'll get symbols in our dreams that tell us about something that's going to happen to warn us or just kind of like let us know. Um, and you can look back and see that in hindsight. And if you did successfully lucid dream, you might want to write that down and just say like what you tried to do. If you tried to contact somebody, just kind of like to note it and to see what you did. The next thing is something I started implementing about a month ago, and they are these Stellase vitamins, you guys. And I'm not a huge vitamin person. I'm not like a big supplement girl, but I've been super loving these. So these have a bunch of different nootropics and adaptogens and nourishing minerals for simpler sleep and less stress. So I'll read you guys what they have in here. They have valerian, melatonin, L-theanine, Magnesium, ashwagandha, vitamin B6, passionflower, hops, and bacopa mani eri. I don't know how to pronounce that, but these have been so, so cool, okay? They say to take two before bed about, I think an hour or 30 minutes before bed. I started by taking only one because, okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm really bad at taking big, big capsules, big pills. They're pretty big. Let me show you. So they're, they're a little big for me. And I know I'm a baby. I'm really a baby when it comes to these. So I was like, let me just take one and see how it goes. Um, you know, cause two, I think I did take two one night, but it's so hard for me. But um, I started by taking one and it worked so well. And my husband was taking it too with me and we had such good sleep. And good sleep is like the number one thing to induce lucid dreaming. Um, but I felt like not only did I sleep so well and so deeply, my dreams got really, really vivid 
And it was really interesting because my dreams were a lot more realistic instead of, you know, the really weird, like, why is this flamingo talking to me? Um, like it was like real things happening in like real life. And it felt so, so realistic. Um, and I thought that was so interesting. So I've been really, really liking these. Um, I will have their website linked down below. I really, really like them. I love the adaptogens, the nootropics that are in them. I don't know a whole lot about vitamins and things like that, but they have made me feel really good. They've made my sleep so deep and I've really enjoyed it. So you can also use the code LUNA for 10% off. I'll have that down below. If you want to get your own, let me know how it works for you. And one thing too that I wanted to mention, because I went on vacation, I didn't bring them. Even when I wasn't taking it, I felt like the dreams were still very vivid. So I feel like it kind of stays stays with you for a while. Um, so I don't think you need to take it like every single night because I definitely have skipped it and still felt like my dreams were really nice and very vivid. Okay, my next tip is something that I actually found from this book, Dream Yoga and the Practice of Natural Light. Now the author of this book, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name and I don't want to say it wrong. I think it's Nam Kai Norbu. I'm really sorry if I said it wrong, but this, like I said, was a super interesting book. It is definitely a little bit challenging. Um, they, they do reference just like so much in Tibetan Buddhism and things like that. And it's just not my wheelhouse. I just don't know a whole lot about it. So I had to definitely, it's a tiny book, but allow yourself time. Um, and within this book, it was talking a lot about how to enter this spiritual lucid dreaming basically and one of the main things they say to do simple it's just asking yourself throughout the day am i dreaming i don't think so and and you know answering it right just asking yourself am i dreaming if you make this a habit and you're just like every couple hours you don't have to say it out loud but just ask yourself you know is this a dream am i dreaming um, you'll just kind of train your body and then you'll find yourself doing that in your dreams and it'll be a little easier in your dream state to be like, huh, you know, I don't, I don't think this is real life. And then you can realize that you're not dreaming. So it's really, really simple. And I have heard other people um, talk about this. I think it's just called reality testing. Um, but yeah, it's really as simple as just asking yourself um, or you can just, I know some people have said, just say I'm dreaming right now because all of life is a dream. Wow. But um, yeah, I just do <laughs> I just do the am I am I dreaming? Just check it in with myself every so often. If is is this all a simulation? Is this all a dream? You can get pretty deep. This next tip is for all my little witchies out there, okay? Um, and this is to create a sigil for lucid dreaming. In this book as well, they had a symbol that I believe is ancient to it's like a tradition for the Tibetan Buddhism religion, I think. Um, I'm really not 100% sure, but it, it just made me think of sigils and the power that's behind them. And I was thinking that would be a really cool thing. So creating a sigil, if you don't know what a sigil is, it's basically just a symbol that you make out of a word or words. Um, so you could do like lucid dreaming and then just cross out all the double letters or whatever way you like to make your sigils and then create those letters into a sort of symbol. Um, and then charge that with your intention. You can keep it by your bedside and look at it before bed. And then once you kind of have it memorized, you can visualize it in your head before you go to bed, have that there with you. Another little witchy tip is to create a sleep pillow. And I actually have a spell um, book of shadow page on my Patreon. So if you wanna check that out, I think it's available to all levels. Um, but basically you can just keep herbs near your bedside that are really conducive for um, positive sleeping and lucid dreaming and things like that. So um, you can just make it into a little in a little bag, a little sachet, however you like to do it. Um, and with that, I have my final tip, which is keeping crystals on your bedside that are good for lucid dreaming. And you can make, mix that together and put the crystals in the sleep pillow. Um, but what I have is a little crystal grid on my bedside nightstand. And I just have a lot of crystals that are good for lucid dreaming and for just general like relaxation and peace and self-love, which are all things that you want to bring in for a peaceful sleep. Some of my favorite crystals are Appetite, which I don't think is a traditionally lucid dreaming crystal. It might be. 
um but i got it and then i immediately put it on my bedside you guys it was a crazy experience the first week that i had it on my bedside my husband and i both had insane dreams and we actually went literally i'm not lying <laughs> went into each other's dream in a way we had a dream that had the exact same people in it in the exact same location which we'd never been in but when we were describing our dreams to each other in the morning we were like that's literally where i was <laughs> it was really crazy so i've had a really good experience with that being on my bedside again i think it's for lucid dreaming but it might not be um, i definitely don't see it when i see people talk about good crystals for your bedside but it has been really really good for me um, amethyst obviously it's just really good for relaxing and getting you connected to your third eye and your crown chakra rainbow moonstone is another good one um, moldavite which actually okay i'm doing a whole podcast on this on my experience with moldavite so if you guys want the tea on my experience with moldavite i know it is so talked about in the spiritual community it's such a hot topic and it more so was a couple years ago but um if you guys want my experience definitely check out that podcast it's um it's gonna be a video podcast as well so it'll be on this channel um but yeah that's crazy anyway you can keep that i would say have moldavite by your bed if you are um maybe wanting to connect with like like aliens <laughs> like the more out there spirits right if you're wanting to connect to like your star seed stuff or um even just like spirit guides and things deities and stuff i just it is such like an otherworldly crystal that i think it's really good for kind of really astral projecting into a different place going somewhere wild so if you're interested in that i would definitely check out moldavite it is an investment but yeah um clear quartz is really good just for amplifying whatever energy you want smoky quartz is one that i really really like to have because it's really good it's kind of cleansing in a way um it really helps to make sure that you're in a good headspace which i think if you're someone who struggles with mental illness or ptsd or depression anything like that it's really really helpful to have just to make sure that you're interacting with positive energies and nothing's getting too heavy for you um it is probably like top five favorite crystals of mine um it's really really beneficial and basically any crystal that is blue or purple that for the most part will be connecting you to the upper chakras which will be the ones that you're wanting to activate a lot of clear ones too selenite's an interesting one i am testing a theory because some people have said not to have selenite on your altar or your bedside because it is so cleansing that oftentimes it can kind of like keep the spirits out like all of them kind of like an equivalent to white sage um but it's like too cleansing that it's not letting any of that energy in and so i'm testing it out because i'm like okay we'll see let me get my own thoughts um i'll let you guys know how selenite goes but other than selenite any clear crystals as well will connect you to the crown chakra those are my tips i hope you guys enjoyed make sure to use these practices for a couple of weeks at least and then you'll start to see you're remembering your dreams more you are having more vivid dreams and then as that progresses you'll probably be able to lose the dream pretty quickly um, and yeah, just give yourself some patience and some kindness and, um, yeah, then you can ask questions to deities, pass on loved ones, get spiritual advice and just explore the world and swim underwater with me. We can explore the ocean together. It'll be so, so much fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts below. I love you all so much and I will see you all next time. Bye.